Here's how my virtual meetings usually go. I, um, I got a shot of a bunny for a weather shot. Pretty exciting stuff, right? Well, this virtual meeting was totally different. The Pennsylvania Girls Wrestling Task Force hosted a virtual come try it night a few months back that featured three giants in the sport. Taylor O'Donnell Bacher and Sarah McMahon were both on the first U.S. Olympic women's wrestling team in 2004. McMahon won silver in Athens and she's currently a UFC fighter. Tamira Menza Stock won a world championship in 2020 in women's wrestling. These three women have made it to the pinnacle of their sport and they've seen some pretty cool things along the way. So you may think a simple virtual virtual meeting on a random night in May was no big deal to them, but they were pumped up and they were impressed with the younger wrestlers who were speaking up in hopes of getting others to sign up. I kind of had to do it on my own. I was like the only girl in my state and I, I wish that I had had other girls who were, who had, you know, was, were going through the same journey with me and we had like a little group of people that we kind of had each other's back and support each other and encourage each other and had gone through the same things. Like I didn't get that in my lower grades and I didn't get it in high school. Um, the first experience I had with that was college. Um, and I, I think I needed that. I think I needed, you know, got, having guy friends and being around guy wrestlers. I think that that's great too. You know, like I like my guy friends, but there's just something different about other girl wrestlers who have gone through the same things that you have. You just have like a, uh, unspoken kind of camaraderie and pact like you've been through different things you know and so and you experience wrestling different and it's nice to be able to I don't know share that with like a group of girls it's just different I'm glad that I'm here to also guide them and show them that hey trailblazing is fun and you guys are doing a fantastic job so um it's it's exciting and it's great to know that I can pass the baton to somebody and know that they can not only finish the race, but like get the Olympic, uh, what to call it, get the Olympic torch and like just, just be like phenomenal, phenomenal leaders in the sport. When I see young women developing their voices and developing their leadership qualities, I think that that is amazing for the sport of wrestling. But then I even think of it in a in a bigger in a bigger field. Like that's amazing for the, our states and our country and our world to have these really strong inside, um, you know, emotionally and physically strong women having a voice and stepping up and speaking up. I just am like, this is this is a big deal. Brooke Zumis was also a part of the meeting. She's on the wrestling coaching staff at Parkland High School here in Pennsylvania, and she's also a member of the Pennsylvania Girls Wrestling Task Force. I asked her about the feedback she got from the virtual Come Try at Night. The most consistent piece of feedback we got was just how incredible the girls were. You know, the, the elementary, middle school, and high school girls, people were so impressed with how articulate they were and what a great job Lily did hosting that segment. And I think they felt that portion was just you know, so genuine and it just really connected to people. So I would say that was the most consistent point of feedback I got, which was really cool because it's going to be the wrestlers, it's going to be the girls that help lead this movement to get the sport sanctioned. In March, the Pennsylvania Girls Wrestling Task Force launched a website to help get the word out about getting the sport sanctioned by the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association. Lily Scherer is going to be a senior at Delaware Valley High School and she's helping lead the charge to sanction PA. I didn't start being really outgoing and out like just speaking like my mind and stuff like that until I started wrestling on the national team when I had to force myself to like be genuine with these people and kind of like open up and let them be a part of my life because I mean my parents dropped me off and I'm away and I'm with strangers for two and a half weeks at a time like it definitely helped me open up and come out of my shell which I'm really grateful for because I don't know what I'd do if I was still shy I'd be a pretty boring person <laughs> but yeah no wrestling definitely had a huge part to play in my character and just personality as a whole. Cher travels to tournaments around the country as part of the Pennsylvania national team. She also wrestles with the boys at Delaware Valley High School, but she took her junior year off from her high school team. You know, traveling to me is definitely really important, especially because that's where I'm going to get the best and the biggest competition. I mean, 
Fargo just got canceled and that was our last opportunity to compete this summer, which was really sad. And I've done well there the past two years, but um, especially for a girl, I think traveling is really important because we don't have those opportunities in our state. Like outside of Pennsylvania, there's tournaments that girls could go to, but you know, you travel a little west and there's way more tournaments. Once you get closer to California and Texas and all those big states that have already sanctioned, then you're getting some of the best competition you'll get. All those, most of those girls on the world teams are wrestling on, like in sanctioned states. So, I mean, traveling is definitely like the biggest opportunity for us right now, but it's so, it's so expensive. And I feel bad for my parents, but that's the only way that I'm gonna get the competition that like as a, elite athlete, I guess, like, we deserve. According to Zumis, the sanctioned PA movement is moving rapidly, and she expects this momentum to continue. And at this point, most of the girls are competing on a boys team, but now we're starting to see that shift where schools are forming those separate girls teams. Um, and PIAA bylaws do require 100 PIAA member schools to have officially formed girls teams that are competing before considering the sanctioning of the sport. So. I think the big trend and you know what's going to happen over these next few years is more and more schools are going to form these teams and as we do that all the data from other states has shown that as soon as you provide an opportunity for girls to wrestle and specifically to really wrestle other girls where they're not just competing against boys your participation numbers just explode there have been states that literally once they provided that opportunity, they saw over an 800% growth within like barely a year, which is absolutely phenomenal. Zuma says girls can wrestle at their school or with a local club. And if they need help getting started, they can go to the Pennsylvania Women's Wrestling Facebook page or wrestlelikeagirl.org. Years from now, when female wrestlers look back at the pioneers of the sport, there will be too many to thank. Not all pioneers have gold medals, but they all have a voice. They're all sharing their stories, and they're all hoping that you can help sanction PA. For SSP TV Sports, I'm Ken Cara.